<laughs> okay. Uh, exposing yeah. the whole damn thing. Exposing what? The Matrix. Yes. The Matrix? Yeah, the Matrix. Right on the head, what buddy. type of pill are you? Exposing the Matrix. You choosing the blue or the I'm red? I'm choosing the Brock pill. Mm -hmm. Good pill to choose, man. Choose your own pill. Freaking Matrix try to cancel Andrew Tate. This is actually a long clip, guys. We're not watching the whole clip. We're watching 10 minutes of the clip. Uh, I see it on another page. React to a couple minutes of it. Look very interesting. So, uh, what is it? 46. 46. Let's do it all, bro. You know what? Let's do it all, bro. All right, let's do it. Well, this is a good video. We just stressed out a 10 minute video in 46 minutes, probably. <laughs> probably <laughs> Yeah, Ron and Kobe. We did the Kanye one. That nigga Kobe! Been learning a lot about Tucker Carlson since he's been fired. In this country, we have more firearms in civilian hands than we have civilian hands. Imagine a system where the person who's been charged is no longer allowed to defend himself. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about rights, you at some point want to identify the most basic human right of all. What is that? Well, of course, it's the right of self-defense. That's the essential right upon which all other rights depend. If you can't defend yourself, you can't defend your family and your property, you don't have any rights at all. You're a slave by definition. So you may be wondering in this moment of creeping authoritarianism, how is the right to self-defense doing in our country? Self-defense, the cornerstone of all freedoms without which you cannot be free, you are owned. Self-defense is becoming illegal in effect in a lot of places and not just in very liberal places like New York City, even in states with some of the strongest self-defense laws on the books. Arizona, for example, allows residents to shoot trespassers on their property. The fact that so many Americans have a firearm within reach but never commit violence tells you that guns are not the problem. Most people in this country can be trusted with an AR-15, just as we can be trusted with cars and light aircraft and electricity and baseball bats and insecticide and chainsaws and pruning shears and countless other objects that could easily double as weapons. Uh, so no. now this very not, same system, the system that imprisoned... What y'all think about that point right there? That is I mean, a pretty good point. That is a great point. Because you can't use anything as a weapon. If you yeah. really put it... You can make a hydrogen... You can make a bomb, probably. Yeah, you can make a hydrogen bomb, a bomb out of your kitchen supplies, bro. Yeah, no, I don't think the weapons are the problem. We've discussed this before. It's the people that's the problem with the weapon when they but, do something bad. So, it's not the weapon. What you finna say, my brother? I was gonna say, yeah, I mean, P, I think P was always in the problem, but, I mean, I don't even know, how like, since P was a problem, but, like, how many, what's, what's the stat? How many masters have been this year so far? Over 100. Over 100? That's all we know. Man. Like, I don't even know how to fix, you know what I'm saying? Even though, exactly. like, although most people can be trusted with that, you, you got a few bad apples. Yeah. That's the problem, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And how do you fix those few I bad apples? they're too easy to get. Maybe we should, like, uh, put something in place to make it a little harder to get. Yeah. Like, like a little harder maybe. to obtain, because you could literally just be 18 and go buy AR right now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, like, you might need to actually go through. 21 should be the limit. Probably. It should be a license for, like, a car. I would say 20, I would agree, but, but even in states where you have to have a license, there's still problems. You have to be able to drink to get a weapon. Period. That's what I believe. But even still, how many? But I mean, there's I people of uh, well you over can go 18. Go to the military and be a sniper. Well, yeah, that is true. Well over 18 that's committing mass murders. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. you have a clean record. And still, people with clean records still commit mass. Ain't gonna lie, like a mental thing. Yeah, like, so, I, mean, I don't think you can fix that problem. How do you even evaluate that? I'm exactly a mental. I don't problem. think you can fix that problem, bro. Because you can make ghost guns nowadays too. But they also just had another guy in another country, a teenager. Y'all seen that? He killed like over like I don't know 10 people or something like that. Y'all seen that? Nah. Bro, it was like crazy. I think it was, I don't know what country it was, but it happens in other countries too. So it's like, you know, it's never gonna end. If you got guns, it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. people. Somebody's gonna be yeah, messing with They say in Europe they have mass stabbings. So he's right. I mean, wow. taking the. Taking Serial the, stabber. Like, you know, somebody's running insane. around stabbing everybody they see. Taking the gun. That man, is wow. It's basically taking your right to defend your family. <laughs> Think so, about you know, we ain't got no rod to do nothing about it. You see behind chainsaws, we can just run in. We ain't got no we'll guns. We can run in your house and just chainsaw your whole family. What you? Try to have it burn on you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that is the only thing. Yeah, yeah. Stop the bar. So, so I'm talking about. Yeah, you're all right. But so liberals are trying to take Yo, away man. guns. Liberals yeah. feel as though a solution to that is to take away guns. Because even if it is people, right? We all understand it's people, right? But like, how do we? How do you stop that? Does that make sense? You can't. So that's why I'm not saying I agree with liberals, but I could see why you see their point. Because I'm like, well, what? how? What other solution would you have to make stop that? That, that might be the only solution. But that doesn't feel uh, self defense. But yeah, yeah it does. That's the can't, you can't affect that, right? That's what I'm so, saying. So you just continue to let the problem rise. Because the guns is already out there. And the fact that you. 
getting shit. away from yeah. getting them. Now people are trying to get them literally legally can't get them. And they're going to take part problem. That's what I'm saying. So is it one of the things you just got to live with? Might be good for them, though. The constellation go right, goes up. What you mean? It might happen. If they ban guns and they see you with a gun, you go to jail. That's how California is, but they have tons of mass shootings. In California? You can't have guns in California. Hey, mass shootings in California? Oh, they have mass shootings. Hell yeah, I'm pretty sure. Bro, you can make Imagine a those gun. Up, Remember, you can make a 3D gun and do havoc out there. I, I, mean, I ain't seen that happen. What? A 3D gun. You don't remember us watching that the video? They can make actual that's, guns. That's, that's the ghost guns. Yeah, yeah, that's the ghost that. guns. Wow. You yeah, can make a switch and everything. They're not going to be able to just see every gun and just take every gun. So, bro, but literally, I don't think they believe that. Yeah, that's Once impossible. There's so many guns out it's here. too many, bro. I do not think Think about this generation. Of guns. Think about some of these people that grandparent had uh oh, bro, <laughs> what show is Tucker oh. talking this? I mean, well, I guess that oh, is like, his clip. Of, yeah, I guess this is kind of them have a couple rods. So imagine I don't know, bro. I'm years. looking at mass shooting by state. I have not seen California yet. Well, I seen no. the first one, California, yeah. Well, I just know I don't know that, but I just thought I've seen multiple times. California. Yeah, I've heard, nah, actually, I'm pretty sure they did. Let's get back into it. Everywhere in bro. Yeah. Come here, boom Uh I didn't see that name pop up too much. Shit, I remember Tennessee, they blew on, on Christmas. They blew, they blew the um, on, downtown. So now this very same system, the system that imprisoned Jose Alba and chained Musa Diara to his hospital. Do you know who Jose Alba is? I guess somebody was robbing him. Oh yeah, and he stabbed him. He did? Who? Yeah, this dude tried to rob that old man. Look, he stabbed him in the neck. He Damn. Oh. He got arrested for that? Yeah, uh, he ended up getting a. Uh, yeah, I think he's good. He ended up getting acquitted or something. Like, yeah, he's not good. good. System, the system that imprisoned Jose Alba and chained Musa Diara to his hospital bed, the Soros inspired and backed system, is putting Joe Biden's main political opponent in the upcoming presidential race on trial for a crime that's not actually a crime. This is the political tyranny part of anarcho tyranny. At about 5 a.m. on Saturday morning in Manhattan, a parking garage attendant called Musa Diara noticed a man peering into parked cars looking for things to steal. Now that's a familiar scene in New York City. Alvin Bragg, who is the local Soros-funded DA, has decided that prosecuting car burglaries is a form of white supremacy. As a result, not surprisingly, car burglaries have risen quite a bit. Musa Diaria, the attendant, is not white, but apparently he's sick of watching other people get robbed, so he told the man to get out, leave the garage. In response, the man pulled out a handgun and fired four times. He hit Diaria in the head and the stomach. It was a nightmare. But somehow, Musa Diaria had the presence of mind to wrestle the gun from the man and then fire back before the man could shoot him or anyone else. By the time police arrived, both men were lying on the sidewalk bleeding. Now, what do you yeah, think happened insane. next? In a sane, self-respecting society, Musa Diaria would have received a medal, if not a ticker tape parade. But in the city of New York, he was arrested and charged with attempted murder and illegal possession of a gun. The same gun that had been used to shoot him. Wow. Dara woke up in Bellevue Hospital oh, yeah, shackled to his York bed. The New York Post ran this picture. It's of him crazy. sobbing. I got Basically, bullets in me and I'm chained to a hospital bed, he said, but I didn't do anything wrong. You can imagine his confusion. This was not the country he expected. And in fact, Musa Diara is exactly the kind of person you want more of in your country. He's 57 years old and he's still working harder than most young people do. The man who shot him, by contrast, does not have a history of going to work every day. His name is Charles Rohde. We checked. He's got a rap sheet of nearly a dozen serious crimes that go back more than 20 years. And yet, as of Saturday at 5 a.m., he was not in jail. He was walking around New York with a gun looking for more things to steal. So for our existing legal system, Whoa. this appears to be a point of no return. And you would think the media would point that out. Even if they support it, this is a big change from the way the country has run for hundreds of years. But no because they're too dumb, too shallow, and above all, too self-interested. So Trump's upcoming arraignment tomorrow isn't a turning point in our country's legal system. It's yet another chance to follow Trump around in the hope that ratings will return. Well, it is a big deal, actually. It's a very, very big deal, but the guardrails are gone. No one in the media seems to be pointing out that this is a huge change in our entire legal system. And no one in the Democratic Party in Washington, even those who are a little bit concerned about where this might be heading, dares say anything at all because Alvin Bragg is, of course, a holy person 
and no one wants to speak out against the crowd on Twitter. So this is all happening in slow motion, and of course we're getting the dumbest possible lectures, as always, from cable news. We've learned how to put everything at 11. We're not making everything the biggest deal. It's hilarious. And of course, they can't wait to make it the biggest deal on the shallowest possible level, and the reason is economic. Since Trump left office, CNN has lost more than 60% of its viewers. They're desperately trying to sell the channel because, like, it's tanking. So they have every incentive to sensationalize anything that Trump does, no matter what happens to the country in the process. So here you have a Soros-funded DA perp-walking a former president. What does this mean? What could Trump possibly be guilty of? <laughs> they don't even tell you! All they tell their eager but small audiences, the walls are closing in on career criminal Donald Trump! They're gonna turn Trump's motorcade into OJ's Bronco because otherwise they're gonna be out of a job because nobody watches them anymore. Imagine a system where the person who's been charged is no longer allowed to defend himself. Oh, are you seeing the connection here? Like the parking garage attendant who was shot by a criminal, he gets arrested. Like Jose Albo who tried to save his own life from a lunatic in his bodega, he gets arrested. The people who are the victims of the tyranny don't get to speak. CNN speaks for them. Imagine that. There are multiple reports tonight that Alvin Bragg's office will seek a gag order when Trump is arraigned. Now, that would prevent Trump, on pain of going to prison, from talking about his case in public. But CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times and the Washington Post, all the completely filthy, corrupt liars in the media, handmaidens to power, they'll be able to say whatever they want. And it's possible you've heard an advocate for gun control say that in this country we have more firearms in civilian hands than we have civilian hands. And that is true, actually. The total American population is about 332 million people, and collectively they own more than 400 million firearms. About half of all U.S. households have at least one gun at home, and many have much more than that. Plus they have ammo billions and billions of rounds of it. Take them away! Those are all real numbers, but they are hardly an argument for gun control. They're an argument, in fact, against it. Ask yourself, what would it require to confiscate all those guns and all that ammunition and turn the United States into a disarmed nation like Turkmenistan or North Korea? Well, it would take a police state, and it would end in civil war. No sane person wants either one of those things. But thankfully, we don't need them. He ain't like he hit no yeah, shit yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just hit no straight facts. Sometimes. Facts. Facts. Yeah, facts. What? You want to come with some more facts? Man. He said, if you try to take the guns, it will be civil. Bro, people yeah. not letting it. That's why I said you can't introduce that and take it away. Like, people come all around to take all the ARs. How? And, but that's oh, going how? against the amendment. That's what I would have heard, too. Good. So that's what? the Second Amendment. You can't do that. Uh, that would be crazy. What the heck is just happening? You think, you think a country, like, imagine if America didn't have guns, the civilians didn't have guns. You think America would have been invaded plenty of times? Like, nah, we spent too much on yeah, that. Yeah, we still have the most powerful military. Ever since 9 11, it's not, nah, <laughs> man, it's not gonna happen. Taking away the guns. No, that would be insane. You know how much I, money I don't guns would actually, make? People that believe that, I don't think they actually believe that, bro. That, that statistic right there is insane. It's more guns than people. I can see that. We yeah. could we, we could surpass that statistic right now. And turn the United States Damn, into Tucker. a disarmed nation like Turkmenistan or North Korea. Well, it would take a police state and it would end in civil war. No sane person wants either one of those things. But thankfully, we don't need them. In the late 19th century, researchers finally decided that infection is spread by germs. And as a result of that conclusion, surgeons are now required to wash their hands before they cut you open. Everybody agrees that this is progress. But what if we had refused to learn how infection is spread? What if we just didn't want to know? Well, appendectomies would still be fatal, and we would be a backward, ridiculous, uncaring people. It's impossible even to imagine that. And yet, on the question of violent crime, of murder, it's very easy to imagine that because it's happening. Our leaders are determined not to know why people shoot each other, and they don't want us to know either. They're adamant that we do not ask questions about motive. It seems, for example, like an awful lot of mass shooters have taken prescription psychiatric drugs in the days before they opened fire and killed others. Have you noticed that? Maybe you have noticed that. Good luck saying it in public. You'll be shouted down immediately by someone with an advanced degree. How dare you criticize Big Pharma? 
What are you, a conspiracy nut? No, actually you're not. You're someone who cares about cause and effect. You're a rational person. The only conspiracy here is the one to design to prevent you from figuring out why mass shootings keep happening. Consider the killings that took place on Monday in Nashville. The killer was a 28-year-old female transgenderist who shot her way into a Christian elementary school and murdered three nine-year-olds and three adults. Why did she do that? In a rational country, that is the very first question we would ask. In our country, it's the last question. In fact, often it's never asked at all. On those rare occasions when somebody finally manages to wonder out loud about motive, our leaders immediately start lying, which should tell you a lot. How about some examples? Consider two shootings that took place at gas stations in the past year in the United States. The first shooting occurred around 2 p.m. on October 6th in the state of Missouri. A 23-year-old felon called Javon Taylor, with a long criminal record convictions for armed robbery, for example, began threatening a female clerk, apparently because the gas station didn't carry the kind of cigars that he wanted. That's when an off-duty fireman called Anthony Santi, who was inside, decided to step in. He told Javon Taylor to leave the store. Well, in response to that, Taylor began threatening him and then ran toward his SUV outside. Since he followed him outside because he suspected that Javon Taylor would retrieve a gun from the car, and that's exactly what he did. Javon Taylor pulled an illegal handgun with an extended magazine from his SUV. Santee, not wanting to get shot, put Taylor in a headlock. And that's when Javon Taylor handed the gun to his girlfriend, and his girlfriend shot the unarmed fireman in the back, killing him. It was an execution. It's not a close call. The footage is online. We're not going to show it to you because it's awful. But if you have any doubt, you can watch it. So there's no debate about what happened here. And yet the local social justice DA, Gene Peters Baker, refused to press charges against the person who killed the firefighter. No way. Now why? No well, way. there may have been a political component. And we know that because online, BLM activists immediately oh, celebrated the killing. What? No way. I, I got a question. That that would be a tough case to, if that's on what video. What you mean that's to, oh, to the watch? It's on camera. What do you mean to watch it, like, to, to decide who was wrong or right? But, like, he grabbed him before he grabbed the gun? Like. Bro, he went to the, go to the car and get a gun and he just choked him. Yeah. Yeah. He was finna re retell like, bro, what? He was finna shoot him for telling him to leave. No, I ain't gonna lie, that might be the craziest shit I've ever heard. I gotta see the video. I don't know what happened. I gotta see the video. But did y'all not hear what he just said? He, he I heard. heard. Did he have? Did he have the gun already? No. Yeah, he, he sat down the with the. He said like his, he gave his girlfriend the gun. I guess I don't know how he was getting choked and gave his girlfriend. So he went to the car. <laughs> they, they said they was arguing in the store because he was threatening the clerk. He said he told him to get out, and then he got out and dude went to the car to get a gun. And what in that process, the firefighter came out and started choking him. So he yeah, he's following him. He knew. Yeah, yeah. Like he like followed him out of the store, and he went. He could have left though, and then he choked him out. <laughs> what does that mean? That's no, I'm just wrong. saying. Nah, that, nah, no, no, I see, like, see, like, they, well, like, as police, they could have said you could have left the situation. Okay, okay, okay. He's not a police. He could have left the whole situation. He didn't have yeah, to follow yo. He yeah, could have got out of there. He stepped in for the store clerk first. Yeah, stepped in for the store. Who attacked him first? So I mean, that's why I asked. Did he have the gun in hand? Then he put him in chokehold, or did he put him in chokehold? We watched the video. I got. That's what I'm saying. I need to see that. There's no debate about what happened. Like, if he followed him to his car. Local listen, listen. social justice DA, Javon Taylor, pulled an illegal handgun with an extended magazine from his SUV. Santee, not wanting to get shot, put Taylor in a headlock. And that's when Javon He's Taylor fine. handed the gun to his girlfriend, and his he girlfriend was shot. He, okay. he like, but, like, he had to follow the man to his car. He could have just left. Now, see, that's he, say, he, he that's why he was trying to protect people, though. I, bro. But in a rational country, if you see a yes, woman bro, who's I like, lie, bro. but in danger, you I can try. I see, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. As, as a police, they could have said, you know, you could have left. The you could have left the scene. And the so like, at that point, yeah. they feel like they had to protect themselves because he came to their car. That's their property. Like if you if you if you really look at it, he did say he felt like he was found. Yeah, he said felt like it. Yeah, so in the video, he did follow him to the. Yeah, that's you can't do I that. I think I actually did. Yeah, you can't. Video. You can't do that, bro. So you have to Kansas move around. City. You gotta uh, move that's, around. That's a difficult yeah. situation. You can't. You and can't. he is off duty. It's not. Yeah, and he's not no police officer. He's a fighter fighter. You gotta move around. You that's gotta. Gonna, you gotta. I call can't say I wouldn't need to say. No, no, no. You can't be real. 
I was thinking yeah, in the same that's country, if you act. see a woman and you think the woman is in danger and you help the woman, I don't see no, I, 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 I see, I see that point for that, but you, you know you Because I got like me, I probably just would have upped it at him. <laughs> oh, who? You talking about? The, on the, uh, oh, you talking about if you was a fireman? Yeah, yeah. If you would have saw the gun. Yeah, but if you fall, walk in a man to his car. And yeah. you grab him? Yeah, he was with his girlfriend. Like, you you grab him? Yeah, so like... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that is a difference. That's, 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 that's kind of hard. Talk about something. Talk about something, Brian. Let's give him a few more minutes. He should have been arrested. No, yeah, that's wrong. Cool. But like, that situation, you know what I'm saying? That's a difficult situation. He followed the man. You could have moved around. To me, it's not that difficult. Yeah, I mean, but if they they go to court, if they go to court, there was a couple other. He could have locked the door. He could. She could have locked the doors. He walked out the store. The man locked the door. There's a couple other options. He could have. That could have took place rather than He could have called the police. He could have stayed in the store, locked the store, called the police. He followed that. He that the dude was openly threatening what he's going to do to the store. Exactly. He the cigars he and he left. I know. And he, then he's going to that guy. So if you only make a threat, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this to I'm you. I'm on team. Then that. that I'm on team. But you can't so say. Can't, you know, can't that's, say that's a difficult one. You can't one make now. threats and then. But I mean, but obviously. The man left the store. They could have locked the store. Obviously, the police. police felt like they didn't have this discussion. And they said, bro, was wrong for choking them. So. so online, BLM activists immediately celebrated the killing. That's not, that's so, not a guy with a criminal <laughs> record and a knife in his hand starts trashing your store and then runs outside to his car. You see, Naz told police later that he shot Marquis Demps because he feared for his life. He thought the guy was going to get a gun and come back and kill him. And that's a reasonable fear, of course. The Anthony Santis murder demonstrates that it is. But in this case, the DA, a Soros-funded anti-police political activist called Jose so Garza, is Soros. pressing charges against the clerk. He wants you to see Naz, a man who's widely respected in his community, a man who actually contributes to our society, as you just heard. He's trying to send that man to prison for the rest of his life. So, but these two cases together, consider them in tandem. What's the message? Well, the message is if a violent felon starts terrorizing people and you're sort of ripping your store apart, on which you rely for your livelihood, you can't do anything. If he goes back to his car to get a gun, you have to let it happen. So get shot or go to jail for the rest of your life. Those are your choices, which of course are not really choices at all. And these are not isolated right. cases that we cherry pick to make some political point. It's happening everywhere. Some people, the New York Times has explained, have views that are so reprehensible, these people are physically off limits. You cannot be in the same room Tucker with people give. like that. You can't talk to them, you can't ask them questions. Their opinions are like smallpox, communicable and deadly. These are the thought criminals, and thought crimes are the only crimes that matter. Other crimes, not such a big deal. Murder and rape and carjacking. Nah. As the New York Times has often told us, people who do, do those things are the victims of your racism. So news of this case, obviously, traveled past Arizona, and people were justly outraged by what was being done to this man. So people tried to raise money to pay that bail on GoFundMe. But GoFundMe wouldn't allow that. This elderly man rotting in jail while his wife lives alone on a border that the Democratic Party has kept open. You can't raise money for his bail. They shut down, GoFundMe shut down the effort to raise bail for this guy. Now, of course, you can raise money for BLM as they burn our country down to make sure Donald Trump is not reelected. But you're not allowed to raise money for people who are being held on a million dollars bail and first degree murder charges for defending their own property along an open border true insanity and a danger to all of us and let's have a national referendum on what ought to happen to the man who shot the armed robber you're eating with your family in a restaurant some lunatic in a mask comes in and shoves a gun in your face which you think is a gun and steals your money and somebody stands up and shoots him back what percentage of americans think that guy should go to jail right around zero probably but houston police along with the county district attorney are putting that man in front of a grand jury to send him to prison. Damn. Wow. They're saying he shot the criminal one too many times. Yeah, they did. Okay. Overkill. He's yeah, he's, you can't, it's hard to see why people aren't even sure they're putting that violence. Uh, if they don't, they'll get out of jail and start terrorizing more people. You know, how y'all feel about that, like that, like that particular um, I think case. that the, the, the action so he, he was justified. Uh -huh. No, he shot him, 
And then, and then he on. kept shooting him. Then he stood over him and shot yeah, him. Yeah, you can't stand over him. That's overkill. Yeah, yeah. 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 then he fled. Or did he sit back? Because if I shoot him and I can get the gun away from him, and he shot and he don't got the gun, okay. Yeah, he did that, kicked the gun away, stood over him, shot him a few more times. Yeah. So, y'all, how do y'all feel like the Houston police handled that? Um, I don't think, I think, yes, it was overkill, but he was robbing the place. So, when you put that into uh, yeah. context, he could hurt somebody. He should at least get overkill for a charge. A lot of people no hurt in, in his defense, they were trying to say that it was a Adrenaline is why he kept shooting him. His adrenaline yeah. was just flowing. Yeah, yeah, you can't say yeah. I, mean, I ain't mean. Like, Man, if I shoot you, I mean, bro, I mean, yeah, but yeah, because you know it's the same thing. Like, please do the same thing. Please do the same thing and plead yeah. adrenaline. So, yeah, I mean, when true. you put that in the context but, like that, I'd say, yeah. I'd say it's pretty justified. But how yeah. do y'all feel, Tucker? How because Tucker said that he has been controlled. So mm-hmm. him saying all of this, these are old clubs. These are definitely right wing uh, viewpoints. So some, just some like, point. can we like say that? I mean, is that credible? Are you asking? How is this? Yeah, I mean, is it credible? And how is he? Exp- I mean, he's exposing maybe the the United States and like you know the system, but I think he's just exposing some things that have happened and uh, why they're crazy. Yeah, that, why, yeah why, like, that's what it is. Speaking only from like a, a, a their side of view and explaining why it's crazy, but I mean, it's hard to argue with something. Yeah, and I think a lot of things Tucker said was his own points because they said earlier we was talking about how he goes against even right wing and I think, I think Fox News viewers would agree with everything he said. Yeah, so, this was definitely like a right wing. Everything he said was, was so right wing. Right because I mean, you know, he was supporting Trump, but he said he don't like Trump. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, man, all this stuff is just so good. He didn't necessarily say he was supporting Trump. Yeah, he just said like the way they're trying to prosecute. I mean, well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what he did say. But um, I, mean, I do think they are, uh, the way he's like breaking it down, how they're trying to take away people's right to defend themselves is crazy. No. The world is pretty crazy. I mean, it's a flaw. I mean, it's a flaw. It's, it's hard to plead both yeah. sides. And, I mean, you can't have a solution to everything. I don't know, man. No, yeah. man, that's but, like, You have <laughs> one law, it pleases one side, makes the other happy. The flip side yeah, is just so hard. Like, it's, you know, it's hard to please everybody. Yeah. Nobody can be pleased. You're never going to please everybody. I just like, yeah. why don't I have to divide? But we like, do. One thing everybody does, does disagree on is we need to figure out why people are killing people. It's not a new thing that people are having guns, but it is a new thing that mass shootings are happening. Yeah, so yeah. why are they happening? Well, we could say it's more mental health problems. Probably definitely face. that. Um, I, I, I just confused like, on why. You think it's the phone? I think we're definitely in the mental health. I, I don't know why. I yeah. just think we need to try to figure out why. Just, just Everybody the united need to figure out why. Yeah, I think we're in a mental health epidemic, I would say. Should we yeah. invest more money into the mental health? Like, uh, maybe. Why, how do you do that? Like, what do you mean? You got to figure out how go? and why is that happening? Who's going to go? You mean who's gonna go? But people know they have mental health problems, but who's actually gonna go? Already? Yeah, like that's all. I'm like, you know, like, that's why I'm saying like how into do, the how do you do that? Do you into like into like research? No, into research and clinics and possible solutions. That's what I'm saying. Do you invest more money? But that's just. But how do you get those drugs? Like, you know, so it's like it might be also drugs unless you uh, enter into school. Like, mm, but there's a lot of type of shit going on. Something else. Too. I just feel like, man, I don't, I'm confused on why it's why do people see that you can you like it or you don't like it? So you want guns or you don't want guns? Why do we have to? Make it seem like okay, I'm liberal, I'm conservative, and we just car on going against each other. Because they are it's both just, on different sides of that yeah. podium. Yeah, there's so like, a spectrum. Yeah, but I agree with some things liberals say, and I agree with some things conservatives say. What the fuck do I have to pick a side? Like you know? No, you don't have to pick. You don't have to pick a side. Like that shit would. That's just like it just. That's what they should have had in school. Mental health, like a class for to help children. I mean, there's, there's like outlets they already. Got yeah, there's already outlets they got for counselors, it. but I think they might need to actually. But you look at it's different if you go do that type of stuff. They don't. Yeah. They keep it discreet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have That's to, what I was saying. Invest, that stuff maybe, to invest more money in that. And I can also Unless see why. Harming yourself. Also, on top of they doing like it's a lot of confusion out here for a lot of people. So you know. One more thing. So as far as the guy with the store, though, that stabbed the guy, did he? Okay, yeah, they let him he, off. He like, didn't get a big did, case. Why did they even try to accuse him of that? Um, because so I guess his girlfriend came in, and I guess they couldn't afford something. Yeah. And she went to the car. He came in, tried to attack dude. Yeah. He stabbed him in the neck. He was basically saying he murdered him. Like it was self defense. Dude was, dude was trying to get behind. Dude walk behind the counter and start attacking this old man. Yeah. He stabbed him and he ended up dying. And they was trying to say, oh, he's a murderer. He's a murderer. So he went to jail for like murder. And then they. I ran also, the, the trial ran this course and they was like, nah. Another confusing thing. Why did the BML, BLM, um... They celebrated that yeah, killer. Yeah, and he's not even black. 
No, because they're trying to celebrate the black guy killing the white guy. So yeah. Basically, like, it, they used the context Wait, it was I used, like, he followed him to the car. And yeah. Oh, so that's the one that celebrated? Yeah, because yeah. he followed him to the car. He did. He, he's in the store tripping. But, and the white dude was like, Get But that guy wasn't black, though, bro. The really, guy that killed him was 100% yeah, black. Yeah, yeah. His name was Javon. Yeah, yeah, he was black. Javon Taylor. Bro. He was black, bro. And he was a felon. So, okay, that might have been. So, one did you not see that Indian, photo, Indian guy on that photo? Like, am I tripping? That was yeah. different. That was different okay, different okay, different story. Okay, okay, I'm tripping. That was the store owner. Yeah. Yeah. The New York that stabbed the kid in the neck. But I, I, that's crazy that the liberals, the BML, pushed that. But I just <laughs> thought that, that I, I would have thought that's just to stand your ground laws. That's all laws out here. Like, bro, come to somebody's property or even a personal space, bro. Yeah. I have all right to defend myself. So, but I mean, I'm just not, me personally, I'm not gonna let nobody. Threat, but in some events, the, the stand your ground, it's hard to please. We will go on and on about this. I, you know? I, I'm not the gonna let openly threatens you though. I'm not gonna let that ride. But you, I don't, I don't want to go down this hole. But even this. Even the standard ground law has its own flaws in itself because when you look back at the Trayvon Martin situation, George Zimmer was able to get off based on those laws. You know, yeah. I think that that was insane. I mean, that was his property though. He was just patrolling. But based on those laws, I think no, I, but Trayvon put his hands on him first, right? Property, was I, it, it was the gate, but there's no one to prove it. He, he was, was security. Property, though. Yeah, it was the security. He was never yeah, watched. Yeah, he was never watched. So. That's the state of is your property. No, yeah, the state of the is, it's not even just your property. It's like, if you feel threatened or somebody's finna do any type of harm towards you. Yeah, that was and they it. got to all the cases. They got to all the cases. And they, so. I mean, but also the jury can have flaws too, bro. It's just like the decisions. Yeah. How decisions are made. Just but a lot of, a lot of, a lot of courts is not jury. It's usually like the judge that's your controller, bro. You yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. That's, that's crazy. To, like, you know, the judge that's what they make the decision. Yeah, I know, but, but, but like majority of people, Cases that I have seen in my Man, life, the, it's just the judge. The judge, <laughs> the judge. Uh, <laughs> they sentencing him. I don't know how long he's gonna get, but I don't even know how they sentence. Like, who's deciding that? Is he's the judge? Yeah, a lot of times they come to agreements before like, the trial. Know, you gotta go take the thing, You gotta sit in the back. You gotta go through. Yeah, that's so, it's, it's a lot. Even with the stand your ground, it's so many flaws. And man, we'll be all day talking about this, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, y'all, let us know what y'all want. Let us know what y'all think about the video. Let us know what y'all think about Tucker Ryder.